What a wonderful place to taste the goodness of God. A wonderful space to feel the grace of God. He brings a hope, a joy, a light from above for every kingdom, good and boy. What a wonderful day to see the goodness of God. A wonderful way to hear hope from above. boys and girls to fetch the goodness. We're so excited you're here. We've teamed up with God to bring you an inspiring show about the gift of salvation. Do you know what a V-I-W is? V-I-W means a very important word. Today's very important word is salvation. Do you know what salvation means? Salvation is a gift that God gave us. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So you see, salvation is a gift from God. Why do we need to be saved? Because of sin that separates us from God. Maybe we can explain it better this way. Join Kason, Abigail, and myself on a fishing adventure. Thanks for inviting me, Amy. I've never gone fishing before. You're welcome. I'm so glad you could come. Yeah, and it's such a gorgeous day to fish. Did I put the worm on right? You sure did. Now what do I do? Now we cast the line out like this. Yeah, it's not that hard. Okay, I think I got it. Like this? Uh, That's okay. Try again. You can do this. I believe in you. One, two, three. You did it, Abigail. Great job, Abigail. You're a natural. Thanks, guys. So what do we do now? Now we sit here and wait for the fish to bite. How do I know if the fish bites? You feel the fish tugging on the line. You point your tip up like this, and then use the handle and reel it like this. Okay, that seems easy enough. And this pond is a catch and release only. And that means once we get the fish off the hook, after you reel it in, we have to toss it back into the water gently and let it live. And we will help you when you catch a fish. Thanks. This is fun. I like learning new things. I'm so glad you're enjoying this. Ah, a bug just flew in my eye. Are you okay? Yeah, it just made my eyes water. Did you know there won't be any tears in heaven? No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I was just sitting here thinking about what we learned in our Fetch the Goodness curriculum. Once we're saved, the Bible says God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There's no more death, no more sorrow, and no more crying. Really? What does it mean to be saved? That's my question too. How do you know if you're going to be in heaven? Well. The Bible says that salvation is a gift God gave us, like any gift that we get to accept. It also says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believes in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And if you're saved, then you'll be in heaven. I'm so excited to go to heaven. Me too. Jesus died for our sins, and by accepting him as Lord of our life, we're forgiven for our sins because of his gift and we will not suffer the consequences for our sin, which is death. Death? Death means separation from God, our Creator, forever. That's horrible. God is good, God is love. I don't want to be separated from Him. And He doesn't want to be separated from us either. That's why God sent His Son Jesus to take the punishment for our sins. Wow, God is so generous and forgiving, but what if I do something wrong after I believe in Him? Does that mean that I don't go to heaven? That's a great question, Abigail. Well, when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he did it for all the sins of the world. 
even the ones we do after we believe and receive Jesus. But we still need to repent of our sins. I remember when you and Elijah said that at church. Oh, it was about repentance. When you separate your sin, you separate yourself from sin so that you can be with God, not just sometimes, but all the time. Yes, and heaven is a place where we get to experience God's presence forever without tears, pain, sickness, or sin. Okay, wait, what is sin again? I know, sin is to refuse God's word. That's right, think of it like a fish. A fish is made to live in water. If the fish tried to live on land, it would die. The fish would be separated from the water and the consequences of that separation would be death. Oh, I see where you're going with this. When we sin or refuse, um, re refuse God's word, we're deciding to live outside the boundaries God made for us. Exactly. We were created to live with God, with His Word, and with His Holy Spirit. That leads us in a relationship with Him. Sin separates us from God. That's why we need Jesus. Let me see if I understand what you're saying. You're saying that the fish trying to live without water is like us trying to live without God? Yes, choosing to sin and refusing to repent well, it would be like the fish trying to live on land. Our sin will lead to death and separation from God forever. Jesus helps us change the way we live so that we no longer want to sin, and instead, we want to live for God. I think I got a fish. Reel it in, reel it in. What do I do now? It's flapping all over. Stay calm. Now we take it off the hook and put it back in the water. You did it, Abigail! Can you take a quick picture first? I want to remember this. Absolutely. Okay, smile. That's good. Okay, little fish, time to go home. Congratulations, Abigail. Thanks, guys. That was really exciting. And you have a picture as proof that it happened. The picture will also be my reminder of the day I chose to go to heaven. I learned I have to be like the fish and live in the water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I do believe in Jesus and I want to receive him into my heart as the Lord of my life. And I want to be in his presence forever. I want to love God with all my heart and live in the place that he made for me in a relationship with him. That sounds amazing. Yes. Friends, this is even more exciting than Abigail's fish. So who's ready to be saved right now? I am. I am. Okay, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, I know that I've sinned. I know that I've sinned. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you give us salvation. I believe you give us salvation. As a gift of your grace and through faith. As a gift of your grace and your faith. I accept that Jesus Christ is your son. I accept that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he died for my sins. And that you raised him to life again. And that you raised him to life again. I trust you, Father. I trust you, Father. And I will follow Jesus from this day forward. And I will follow Jesus from this day forward. Thank you for living in me. Thank you for living in me. And helping me obey your will. And helping me obey your will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yay, Yay we're, we're going, going to heaven. heaven. Wait, not yet, right? <laughs> oh no, what time is it? I was supposed to be home for lunch. <gasps> Me too. All right, see you guys later. <laughs> Bye, Amy. Bye, Amy. That was so much fun. Let's go over and see what Zion's doing with her friends. I don't remember when I was saved. I, uh, I think I was like five, so I don't actually remember what it was. I was told stories of when I said the prayer when I was four on Valentine's Day. What I remember is at church in the kids' The children's class, they were talking about giving their life to the Lord. Um, well, you know, what I said, but I do remember the, like, all the other times afterward, like when I was, like, 10, 11. And the teacher 
asked if any of us wanted to give our life to the Lord, and I went up and did it. Well, I believe I was five, and we were at a creek. This dude baptized me in a pool. We were at a bar in church. And my friend Benjamin got baptized there. So I asked my dad, can you baptize me? And he said yes, so I got baptized. Yes, I was baptized in a church in front of a congregation. Um, I was 11 years old. Yes, I was 11 years old. He was baptizing people in, uh, in the horse thing that horses eat and drink out of. This was back in Kansas. It's not that fun if you don't plug your nose. Perfect. I think it's gonna have to, uh, lots of matching. I think it's like, with, as the Bible says, with the golden gates and the streets of gold. And it's probably gonna be really vibrant, cool, like cool weather. So there's gonna be mansions, so mansions on the side and wooden roads, so. And there's like a rainbow. And there's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be really beautiful and nice and nice. And streams of silver. Be big and cool. And all the angels and elders singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Sounds pretty perfect to me. Thank you all for sharing your wonderful testimonies with us. I love hearing the stories of how people came to accept God's gift of salvation. Each story is so unique and powerful. Hmm, that reminds me of our VIW, Salvation. Accepting salvation allows us to be saved from the consequences of our sin, like a fish without water. We never want to be separated from God again. Jesus conquered death and invited anyone who accepts God's gift of salvation to live in eternity with Him. That's amazing! Okay, it's already past lunchtime and almost time for Abigail to come over. I'd better go see if she's here. Hey, Amy. Oh, hi, Abigail. I'm so glad you came over. How was lunch? Good, I guess. Grilled cheese, tomato soup, and cookies. Oh, you brought cookies to share? Yep. Want one? They're still a little warm. Of course. I love cookies, especially freshly baked. This is such a blessing. Thank you. And please thank your mom for me. I will. Mmm, these are so good. If Kason comes over, then we can eat chop two. But if he doesn't, then we can eat chop three. I brought six cookies to share. Well, I don't know if Kaysen is coming over. We'll have to wait to see. So let's just save two, just in case. Sounds good. Looks like you've been very busy, Amy. What are you drawing? I'm so glad you asked. Can you guess what it is? Um, houses? Beautiful houses? Yes, but not just any houses. This is heaven. Oh, like what we were talking about earlier at the pond? Yes. That's cool, but why do you have a big house with smaller houses in it? I thought heaven was, I don't know, streets of gold, clear blue rivers, you know, stuff like that. Yes, the Bible does describe heaven as beautiful and perfect, with streets of gold, gates of pearl, and with the throne of God. We read about that in Revelation 21 and 22. Why are you not drawing those things? Great question. After you guys left for lunch, I was really curious to know more about what the Bible says about heaven, and I decided to look up as many scriptures as I could find. How many scriptures are there about heaven? 
I'm not sure, but I did learn that 54 of the 66 books of the Bible talk about heaven. There are 66 books in the Bible? That's like a mini library. Yes, and we really should hang out more often. You get just as excited as I do about learning. <laughs> anyway, I read this verse that inspired my drawing. May I read it to you? Okay. This is Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 2. So, all your houses are mansions? Yes, but it's more than that. When I read this verse, I noticed that Jesus called heaven my Father's house. Heaven is a home. A home is a place where family lives together permanently. Heaven is not just a beautiful place where we get to live for eternity. It is a home full of love and joy with God's entire family. So the biggest house in your drawing is heaven and all those smaller houses are? And all the smaller houses are the mansions for those who have accepted Jesus' gift of salvation. You see, inside the Father's house, there's enough room for everybody. And Jesus is there preparing a place for all of us. I found that so exciting. I started to wonder, what do our mansions look like? So I wanted to draw a picture. That's very interesting, Amy. I never thought of heaven being like a big home living together. I thought it was, I don't know, just a place with no tears or pain like we talked about earlier. Yes, but this shows us that heaven is so much more than that. Like this cookie. I absolutely love freshly baked homemade cookies. Something about homemade food makes me feel loved, happy, warm, and safe. Heaven will not only be beautiful and pain-free, but it will also be homey. We will have all the feelings of being home. We will feel mm, peaceful, completely safe, gentle, full of love, kindness, joy, and we'll be surrounded by family who really loves us. So going to heaven will be like going home? I think so. Do you think heaven will smell like freshly baked cookies? I definitely get that at-home feeling when I smell cookies baking. Whatever the smell is, I'm sure it will smell like home. <laughs> wow! God's gift of salvation is beautiful. And just the idea of being in heaven with Him? Huh, I can only imagine. It would be wonderful if heaven really did smell like fresh baked cookies. When you think of heaven, what do you think about? You are so smart, creative, and imaginative. I wouldn't want to spend eternity anywhere else. I truly pray that we'll all be in heaven together, living in the presence of God forever. If you've never accepted God's gift of salvation, you can do that right now. You can use the same prayer that we said at the pond. Now, if you've said that prayer for the very first time, we really want to hear about it at fetchthegoodness.com. Just let us know inside our community and we'll celebrate with you. Okay, now how many times did you hear the word salvation today? Let us know inside the FTG community. Well, that's it for today, boys and girls. Please share what you've learned with others. If you have a testimony about salvation, we want to hear it. Until next time, always remember, fetch the goodness. <laughs>